Hello, and thank you for joining us for the School Grants for Healthy Kids Tips for Applying for the Breakfast Grant for our 2016-2017 school year. My name is Ellen Dillon. I'm a Regional Field Manager for Action for Healthy Kids, and I also manage our breakfast grants. We're also joined by Jill Camber Davidson, who's our School Program Manager, who will be assisting us with questions on the back end and working with us during the webinar, too. Before we get too far into the webinar, I want to make sure everyone is able to hear um, appropriately. And you can use your panel on the right-hand side. You can click on Use Telephone and Call In. But usually, using the mic and speakers tend to be the easiest um, for the webinars. Everyone is muted by default, so you won't be able to ask a question live and in person. But you can ask a question by submitting them into the question box. This will enable us to make sure that we're answering all your questions during the webinar. Jill will be answering them on the back end or asking questions as um, they come in to me as we're presenting. And if we don't uh, get to your questions during the webinar, I will be following up with any questions that were not answered after the webinar. The webinar is being recorded, so don't worry about taking too many notes. We'll be sending you lots of follow-up material within the next few days. Um, usually it takes about two business days before you'll receive, but uh, we'll be following up with a copy of the recording, the, a copy of the slide deck, and some of the referenced uh, materials that will help you in your application or in um, tips for applying. So make sure that you just enjoy the webinar and get your questions in so that you know that they're being answered. Here's our agenda for today. We're going to be doing a little bit of an overview of who Action for Healthy Kids is, if you don't already know us. We'll take some time to give you some background on um, the work that we do and why it's so important. Um, I will then go into reviewing our available school grants for healthy kids. Uh, we'll talk about the application process and then do a step-by-step -step overview of the grant application uh, through our online grant portal. We'll go through the important deadlines, so you're well aware of the timeline that's coming up. Um, we'll talk about some tips for applying for the grant. Um, you know, making sure that your application is the fullest that you can uh, submit and so that we can get you funded. And then from there, we will go through um, some additional technical assistance that will be provided to you from Action for Healthy Kids and then answer any questions. So Jill. Thank you, Ellen. To get us started a little bit on what Action for Healthy Kids is, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of background. Action for Healthy Kids fights childhood obesity, undernourishment, and physical inactivity by helping schools become healthier places. Action for Healthy Kids is moms, dads, teachers, students, school and community leaders, and school wellness experts who have banded together to create healthier learning environments for our children. We believe that everyone has a part to play in ending the nation's childhood obesity epidemic. Our programs, tools, and resources make that possible. Next slide, Ellen. Action for Healthy Kids was founded in 2002 by former Surgeon General David Thatcher. Today, we have more than 80,000 members. We also partner with dozens of professional associations, government agencies, and corporations at the national and local level. And our goal is to create school communities where children learn how to make healthy choices from the minute they walk in the front door to the minute they leave at the end of the school day. Why have we chosen schools? While schools are neither the cause nor the entire solution for America's childhood obesity epidemic, Schools show kids how the world should be. Schools provide institutional approval for many behaviors related to food choices and physical activity. Teachers, administrators, and school staff are key role models. Schools show kids what we value and what is important to our community. School policies, school activities, school programs, and school practices reinforce the behaviors our children are learning. When we look at schools, we, in particular, talk about school wellness. 
and school wellness is the belief that schools can and must promote and reinforce healthy eating, physical activity, nutrition education, and physical education in order to increase student achievement. Here at Action for Healthy Kids, we have a strategic model, our learn, act, and transform model that we use as guidance. And if we put this together and look at our model, you can see it here on the screen, we see a three-step approach to meet people where they are, to provide levels of service according to their needs and their readiness. And lastly, before we go on to our two more slides, before we go on to the grant part, I wanted to share a little bit with you in terms of what Action for Healthy Kids does and our national reach. As I said earlier, 80,000 plus volunteers. We have 40 state teams, 75 national partners, and over 9,000 schools in our network. In addition, we have 4,500 school districts, 29,000 schools, and 12.9 million children that we're looking to connect to in the country. So if we put it together, we are a network of partners committed to wellness, whether it be school stakeholders, students, parents, and community stakeholders. Great. Thank you, Jill. I'm going to take over now. I, I do apologize. I think our sound seems like it's a bit staticky, and I apologize for that. We're trying to resolve as we move forward, but I don't think we're going to be able to make it too much better in the middle of the webinar. So I, um, I have removed my, um, my speaker phone, um, and I have moved it closer. So hopefully it's a little bit better, and it's not as staticky for you. So again, my apologies. Um, as we get into talking about our grants, Action for Healthy Kids will have about 1,000 grants for the next school year, with 550 of them being through breakfast. Um, and what we're going to be doing is funding anywhere from $500 to $5,000 in school awards. And in terms of school breakfast, our primary goal is to be able to increase participation and have more students um, participating in school breakfast and um, really approaching some phenomenal ADP or average daily participation goals. We do provide grants to schools. PTOs and PTAs, or school health and wellness teams. We do not fund other nonprofit organizations. We don't provide funding to YMCAs or other organizations that might be working with schools. We will be funding the schools themselves. Uh, we do have some requirements related to participating in the National School Lunch and the National School Breakfast Program. We do know that uh, whether you're a public school or a private school, there are many schools that are participating in the meals program. And for our breakfast grants, that is a requirement because obviously we want to leverage as much as possible the um, additional reimbursements through funding from the USDA. So that will help create a more sustainable breakfast program for you. Um, we note here that it serves K through 12. That doesn't mean an individual school has to um, serve a K through 12. We don't fund preschool programs and college programs. So it's really talking about anywhere in that traditional K through 12 realm. It could be a pre -K, it could be a pre-K through three school, it could be a K through six school, it could be a six through nine, and any variation that works. It doesn't have to be a K through 12 particular school. So let's talk a little bit about our grants. We have breakfast grants. We have two different types of breakfast grants, and we have a district breakfast grant and a universal and alternative breakfast grant. Um, we have multiple years within those, dis those grants, so we'll talk a little bit further about that. But we also have something called Game On Grants. Game On is our signature uh, framework for school wellness, and um, that's a program that can be used by anyone, and those grants are designed to increase physical activity and nutrition opportunity initiatives within schools. So let's get into our breakfast grants first. 
So we have a district breakfast grant. Our district breakfast grant is designed to impact districts with 10 or more schools, and we provide funding in the, in the realm of $2,100 per school. So depending upon how many schools are being impacted will determine how many um, or how much money is being received by the district. When the district applies for this grant, they can apply for as many schools as they like, but it, there is a minimum of 10. Um, you do receive in-depth support and technical assistance from Action for Healthy Kids, including site visits from National Manager, which is myself, um, and then also being able to um, bring together all of the funded districts together for some peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunities and really be able to um, create a, a more of an opportunity to learn best practices and um, gain knowledge from one another. You know, that's a great way to continue to maximize the work that we're doing. There's a lot of text on this page, and I'm not going to read it all, but I'm just going to summarize a little bit more. So as we noted, we're targeting uh, districts with uh, 10 or more schools, and so it can be as many schools as the, school, as the district has capacity to impact. That's the key, is capacity to impact. Uh, we do know that districts have a harder time in rolling out multiple schools. Uh, we do know that there's a little bit more involved when we're rolling out multiple schools. So we want to make sure, A, that the district is really ready. So if you're not sure and you need some support, we're happy to help you to figure that out and what would really be the, um, the best schools to be applying for. And it's really about um, promoting an alternative breakfast model at these schools. So it could be that they're in, going to a breakfast in the classroom or a grab-and-go model. Um, we know that those programs have the greatest participation, and when they are able to eat in the classroom, like grab and go to the classroom, that they're going to have the greatest impact. Um, as you'll see here under impact, the goal is that we want to increase the daily ADP um, by 35%. So if, depending upon where the starting point is, uh, we want to see an increase um, by 35% to those uh, schools. In addition, um, as I noted, there will be additional training that will be received as well as site visits um, from the national manager. Um, what we do target is schools that have a free and reduced uh, meal eligibility of greater than 50%. Now, what you might find is a few of your schools might be slightly less or, sl or, or more, obviously, but we, we tend not to go too low with participation rates um, just because it becomes a harder process for uh, districts to impact and um, increase participation when it, it is too low of a um, participation um, or eligibility of free and reduced. So we want to really be able to maximize the students who are qualifying for free and reduced meals, or um, the team also might be incorporating community eligibility or uh, some type of universal breakfast here as well. But it, this is really designed to improve breakfast through an alternative breakfast model. We do have the schools will participate in the Every Kid Healthy Week, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes in the later slides. All schools will complete our version of the School Health Index. Um, this is a modified version and will allow um, you as the school leads and individual schools to be able to really see where you are in terms of school wellness, maximize um, your opportunities for additional certification, whether it be through the Healthy U.S. Schools Challenge or other types of recognition programs. So we really feel like um, utilizing the School Health Index will provide a lot more uh, resource and detail for your district and your schools, uh, depending upon the needs. And there is funding up available for year two grants by invitation. So this year's grants that were awarded, um, district grants, um, will be invited to apply for additional funding to continue the work. Um, and then next year, we'll have that same opportunity. So that was our district breakfast grant. Then we have a universal breakfast grant. And this is broken down into three-year grants. Now, each year, the school will need to apply. But for our year one grants, meaning that they weren't previously funded um, 
to do universal breakfast grants by Action for Healthy Kids last year, they have the opportunity to apply for a $5,000 grant to pilot a universal and alternative breakfast program. Uh, we know that a school really needs to have both in place um, to really maximize um, participation and, and get to the targeted goals that we've established. Um, we know that schools with a 60% free and reduced rate are eligible um, or greater. That's not in stone because we know that different schools have different break-even points, but we do know that historically um, we've seen 60% being um, sort of that, that sweet spot. So if you're slightly out, out below that and you're comfortable with that um, as being a break-even, that's fine. Go ahead and apply. And if you're doing, obviously, community eligibility provision um, or you're already you're not collecting free and reduced rates, or free and reduced forms, that's okay, obviously, because you're all you know, committing to providing universal or free breakfast for all students. So year one grants, uh, there is a target to increase ADP, or average daily participation, to 60% or greater. So depending upon that starting point, we'll um, you know, determine how much of an increase that would be, um, but that's the goal, is to get that schools in year one to 60% or greater. Schools will participate participate in Every Kid Healthy Week in April of 2017 and also complete our version of the School Health Index. So which schools should apply for the Universal Breakfast Grant? So sometimes schools aren't so sure. Should I apply for this grant or not? I'm not sure if this is a new program or not a new program. So kind of try to break it down a little bit for you. So you might currently be offering free breakfast uh, for all your students, but you need to add an alternative model, so then yes, you should apply. Maybe you're uh, currently offering an alternative model, but we're offering it for free, and you're going to be doing community eligibility next year. <laughs> then you should apply for the Universal Breakfast Grant. Um, you will be providing free breakfast and an alternative model new next year. You should apply. So hopefully that helps you to know which, where you would fall and um, should you apply or not. I want to make sure that we're really clear that um, we're only funding about 100 uh, of these universal breakfast grants across all states. So if you have a district that has multiple schools that might be interested, you might really either want to see if your schools would be better targeted to the district grant with 10 or more schools or apply for those that you feel would have the greatest chance of impacting and getting to that 60% or greater um, ADP. Because we can't fund everyone. And unfortunately, if a district comes in with eight applicants, it would become, become a competitive process. And we really hate to um, you know, decline schools in a district, but we will probably end up having to do that, and, and we will end up picking and choosing among the districts. So you might really want to think about that very carefully if you have multiple schools um, that you're thinking about either um, the universal breakfast grant, either applying for the district grant or um, only applying for a couple of your universal breakfast grants. Then we have your two grants. So based upon the success of programs from this past year that were funded with a year one grant, um, those schools will be encouraged to apply for a year two grant. And the focus of that is really going to be around promotion of school breakfast and nutrition ed, um, or what other mechanisms are going to be needed to move um, a school from where they are to a target ADP of 80% or greater. So if you start to look at the progression, you're thinking, OK, so year one is really kind of getting started, that implementation. Um, it's about purchasing equipment. It's about making those changes, getting that buy-in. And then year two is really about kind of fostering additional um, support, uh, promoting the school breakfast, marketing school breakfast, uh, maybe doing some taste tests, uh, really engaging and um, increasing buy-in 
Or maybe it's adding some more equipment. Maybe you need an extra kiosk, or maybe you need some more um, equipment in another location. So it's really moving a school from maybe a 60% to an 80% ADP. So depending upon where you end on year one, uh, we'll know how much you're going to need to impact to get to that year two um, target. Uh, schools have the option on the year two to participate in Every Kid Healthy Week, and they will complete our version of the School Health Index. Then we have a year three grant. These are for schools that were previously funded for years um, for under two for two years under our Universal Breakfast Grant. If you're not sure where you fall in any of these grants, touch base with us. We have state coordinators who've been supporting our um, schools in the past. You can touch base with me, um, and we'll help you to determine if you are eligible for any of these other year, year two or year three grants or year one grants. Um, schools will receive $500 uh, for their year three, and this is really gut engaging around family engagement. Um, so we really feel like as I, you know, we mentioned year one is implementation, it's equipment, year two is fine-tuning that participation, helping to move them um, closer to that 85% mark, maybe not quite getting there, maybe getting there or surpassing it. Um, it's, a, it's an effort of sustainability, engaging family members. It could be taste test at PTA events. It could be in, in having parents attend a breakfast event. Um, it's, it's lots of little opportunities that you can do to continue the work um, that you've been doing under, over the last two years. Again, schools will have the option to participate in the Every Kid Healthy Week in April of 2017, and they will complete our version of the School Health Index. We do have also in all of our states um, what we call our Game On Grants. And as I do, as I mentioned, Game On is our flexible framework um, for school wellness. And these are focusing on nutrition and physical activity opportunities. So really in increasing physical activity minutes in schools as well as um, uh, additional nutrition initiatives that can be incorporated into the school. Uh, these can include things ranging from brain breaks to um, school gardens, uh, PE equipment, active recess equipment, um, taste tests, lots of different opportunities to really inc incorporate school wellness um, at your school. And um, all schools and all states are eligible to apply. There is a um, priority given to those that are greater needs, so 50% or greater um, are given priority, but any school is eligible to apply. There is a webinar tomorrow um, at the same time, same place on um, the webinars, and you can log in and register for that webinar as well to learn more about the Game On Grants. So as I mentioned, the size of the grants is 500 to 2,500, but most schools are being receiving will be receiving the $1,000 awards. And those that had been previously funded um, are eligible for a sustainability grant to continue the work that they've been doing um, for $500. Um, so a little bit more information on what schools can or will need to be doing in terms of increasing physical activity, um, as well as advancing school nutrition environment through access to healthy foods. Um, as I mentioned, not only will schools be incorporating these different activities, they're also going to be providing information on the importance of physical activity and healthy eating to both students and parents, helping schools work towards healthy school certification through Healthy U.S. Schools Challenge, ideally, um, or if, if working with the Alliance for Healthier Generation, their Healthy Schools Program recognition. Um, and then joining in the celebration during Every Kid Healthy Week, which is April 2017. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Oh, hang on, I've got to go back. Um, Jill, real quick, I just want to check in and see if we have any questions um, that could be answered for the group regarding the grants themselves. Yes, we do, Ellen. We have um, several questions that are coming up with eligibility. Can you please clarify um, eligibility in terms of public schools, 
private schools, charter schools, private alternative schools, are they all eligible to apply? And another question along with eligibility is do you need to or do you have to participate in the federal reimbursable lunch program to apply for a grant? Okay, great questions. Um, so they're a little twofold. Um, in terms of private versus public, charter versus public, um, as and this kind of goes into the do you have to apply, do you have to participate in the National School Meals Program? For the breakfast program, you must participate in the meals program. It's it's a breakfast grant that's impacting and the and we believe very strongly in the that the federal reimbursements will help create the sustainability um, and so that and really will maximize as well as create the guidelines to help. Um, foster proper nutrition. So um, for the breakfast grants, you must be um, participating in the National School Breakfast, National School Lunch Program. You might not have had a breakfast program last year, and maybe you're incorporating a new breakfast program and you're going right to an alternative and universal model. That would be acceptable, meaning that you know you didn't do it last year, but you're doing it this year and you're participating in National School Breakfast. Um, program. Um, any school that does that, and they can be private, parochial, they can be charter schools, they can be any combination of those types of schools as long as they're participating in um, those programs. Game On has a little bit more flexibility um, in that uh, you don't have to um, be a participant of those programs, but schools that have the highest need that also are participating will be given the priority. So when the competitive process, and we know that grants are competitive, um, if your school isn't participating, they're going to have to really justify a great plan and a great need um, in order to uh, receive funding over a school that might have a lesser plan but a higher need. Great, Any Ellen. other questions? Um, yes, along the same lines, if you are applying for a district grant, do you need to have all your schools in the district apply for this, or can you pick schools out of your district as long as it's over 10 schools? Absolutely. Good question. So in terms of the district grant, yes. Uh, you, we have districts that fund all of their schools. We have a district right now in California with 42 schools that were funded this year. Uh, or you can bring it down to maybe your 10 of your elementary schools or 10 of your high schools or whatever combination that best fits your needs and your district's capacity. Um, and we talked a lot about capacity as that ability to roll out to multiple schools in a school year um, and get the uh, most impact over that year. So, you know, really not looking to um, take nine months to incorporate a program, but being able to incorporate a program uh, early in the school year in September, October, uh, really getting implementation in place. So, yes, you can choose any of your schools to apply uh, for the grant. You do not have to apply for all of the grants. And we'll talk about some tips on how to actually apply um, in just a minute when we talk about the portal and as we move forward. Okay, and just to wrap up, I'm going to do two more questions. Uh, one goes with this. Now, people ask, my district has less than 10 schools. Then they're wondering if they still are eligible. And just so you can say to them about applying for the universal and alternative breakfast grant. They're still eligible. Yeah. We're, there's the confusion that way. Sure. Okay, it, it, and I apologize for the confusion. It is. It gets a little confusing with having multiple grants for the same topic with breakfast. Um, so the district grant, um, the minimum is 10 schools. So if your district has fewer than 10, we know that some districts have one middle, one high, and maybe two elementary schools, and that wouldn't um, that would you know, bar them from applying for the district grant. Um, you could apply for the universal breakfast grant, uh, but you would have to apply for each school. Um, and as I mentioned, because we are only funding 100 schools, you really want to make sure that you're, you're applying for the best and the schools that are most likely to 
reach success. So if you have a school where maybe you don't have the buy-in of the principal to do breakfast in the classroom or grab and go to the classroom, but you have it in another school, you might want to do one of those schools and then for the next year. We, we have these grants often every year and we're building on them so you have that option next year to apply for that other school. So really think about who, which of your schools is going to be the most successful with the best practices. Um, and with only 100 of these being funded around the country, you really do want to be thinking about um, you know, applying for schools that have the greatest success. And then you, can, then you can capitalize on that in your district by being able to um, get other schools on board in the next year or maybe um, you know, have other opportunities in the next year. Anything okay. else? Okay. I will let you go on because there's Lots of questions coming in, but I think you're going to okay. answer quite a few of them when we talk about the application. Great. Thanks. I'll, I'm going to move on. All right. So we talked about Every Kid Healthy Week. So Every Kid Healthy Week is a national celebration focusing on um, healthy schools. And it's recognized by Congress as, and it's on the school observance calendar. And so it's designed to focus on um, celebrating healthy schools. You, as a funded school, um, are going to be encouraged to, or required to participate. It can be done during actual Every Kid Healthy Week, which is the last full week of April every year, or any time during the month of April. We know in some states that's always a week of vacation, or the week of testing, or whatever the reason would be why it could be a challenge in a given school. We allow schools to do this any time during the month of April. So. Um, if you want more information on it, you'll see it here. And you'll also see, just in the, as in this picture, that schools are going to be receiving a kit. Um, schools, depending upon, this was a few years back, um, schools received a banner, they received um, masks, they received jump ropes, balls, all kinds of different um, things to help promote wellness, school wellness um, as well as um, uh, physical activity and nutrition. And so those are the part of the school awards that uh, you will be receiving. And the, and the thought is we really want to help um, you guys celebrate Every Kid Healthy Week. And they, we're just encouraging you to host a family-friendly health-promoting event. Not saying you have to create a health fair, um, but if you have a health fair that's being offered, try to offer it in April rather than maybe in May or um, so that it can be tagged as an Every Kid Healthy Week event. There's lots of things that are happening across the country. You can go on everykidhealthyweek.org and find out what's happening through 2016 because it's coming up soon. And here's some pictures of things that have happened in the past. Um, we've had schools that have done different uh, yoga type events or other types of physical events fitness nights, uh, maybe harvesting a school garden, maybe painting a mural. Lots of things are happening during Every Kid Healthy Week. And it can be as big or as small as um, any given school has a need to fit in. So there are lots of steps for applying for a grant. The biggest thing you're going to want to think about um, is starting to organize your thoughts. And we encourage you to do that through a paper application. So if you download the paper application, and we'll include those links in our follow-up material, um, but you can also find them on our website under um, Applying for Grants. Um, but you're going to want to write the application as if the person reading it knows nothing about the issue or what's going on at your school. So provide as much information to um, share as you can. Uh, it's always good to have an external reviewer review your application before you sit down to actually submit it. Once um, you're done your application, you're going to want to log into the online portal to submit your grant application. If you've done all this prep work, it should really only take you 20 to 30 minutes to sit on the portal and enter them. Um, so you know, if you're doing one school or you're doing multiple schools, we'll talk about the difference between the two applications. But we will not accept the paper applications. We will need to um, do this on our online portal. So as we get into the portal, you'll find that um, on our school grants page of our website, um, if you click on Apply Now or School Portal, it'll take you to a registration page, which looks like this. 
And the first thing you're going to want to do is decide, well, do I have a login? Have I logged in? Have I, have I been awarded a grant before? Um, if you haven't, you're going to click on register. If you have, you're going to click on login, and you're just going to enter your username and password that you've already been using if you've been funded previously. And if you've forgotten your password, if you click on forgot password, you'll be sent an email on how to reset your password. Um, we do know, and just so you know, that if you don't receive a, an email in a timely manner, and maybe not in the first two minutes that you've submitted it, but if you request a forgot password and you haven't received it, check your spam filter. We know that if you haven't been on our um, emails in the past that school filters and school spam filters will block. So check those locations first. And if you still haven't gotten it, um, we have a school grants email that you can apply, you send a note to, you can contact your state coordinator, depending upon what state you're located in, and we'll be providing you with those people and their contact information as well. And if you're in a state that doesn't have a state coordinator, then you can go to our school grants page. But once you've logged in, it's going to take you to a home page. Oh, I'm just going to take, go back a second. I'm sorry. Um, so if you register, you're going to enter in your first name, last name, and you're going to use your email. It's going to be your username, and then you're going to create a password. Um, and so, you know, create a password that's easy for you to remember and that way you can um, be, because we do everything in the portal. We do our school awards, our grant awards, we do communications, we do um, our midterms, our final reports, everything we do in our portal. So you're going to want to make sure you've um, created a password that's easy to remember. So once you've done all that and you've gotten in, you're going to have a home page that looks like this. This is really exciting for Action for Healthy Kids. This is going to be your um, your home page for so many things that you're doing in terms of school wellness. And we really hope that you'll find it to be really user-friendly and helpful to um, accessing um, school wellness information. If you want to, for completing your school health index, um, applying for a grant, seeing information about your school. If you're working with others on something related to school wellness, you can include other people in it. It's really exciting to um, have this portal. But once you log in here, this is and the first thing you're going to want to do is then go to, and I'm just going to go to my highlighter here for a second. You're going to go to my profile. And on your profile, you're going to be able to click on information. Um, and enter in about yourself as well as affiliating with schools. And affiliating with schools means that you're going to pick which schools that you're going to apply for. Here's a tip. If you and someone else in your school might be applying for grants, coordinate with them because only one grant is able to be started per grant. So if you're applying for a breakfast grant and someone else might be applying for a breakfast grant, you might want to get on the same page. or um, But you can apply for a breakfast grant and a Game On grant, and two different people can apply for that, and that's OK. But you can't apply for the same grant um, for the same school. Or even different, like two different breakfast grants. You know, say, oh, well, let's try my luck at a district grant and try my luck at a universal grant. It, it doesn't work like that. Um, once you've affiliated with your school, you're going to apply for a grant. You're going to click on the Apply for a Grant. And that will allow you to get to the page that um, where you can see the different grants available. And since all the grants are available in your state, um, you'll be then able to choose your grants. So as I mentioned, you're going to affiliate with your school. Um, I would suggest you enter in your zip code. Don't try to just enter in your school name. If you enter in your zip code, then you can choose which schools you're affiliating with. You can choose 10, 100, you know, if you're applying for multiple schools within a district, or you can apply for or affiliate with just one school. It's as, as many or as few as you like. But if you enter in the school name, you have to enter it in exactly as our database has that school labeled. And we know that JFK High could be JFK High to you because that's how you know it, but it might be listed as John Fitzgerald Kennedy High, you know, and so you really need to know exactly how it might be listed in our database, and we never know until we've gone through using the um, 
portal to find um, via the name and or the zip code. So once the zip code is entered, all the schools in that zip code will end pull up. If you're not sure, I would go ahead and figure that information out beforehand before you log in. From there, you can just continue to enter in some different information and provide um, some information on uh, yourself. And then you'll be able to go to that page where you can choose your grant. So as you can see here on the, this home page and choosing your grant, you're going to be able to choose whichever grant you want to apply for. Um, scroll all the way down on this page to make sure you're applying for the right one. If you were not funded for Universal Breakfast for two years, you should not be applying for a year three grant. And again, if you're not sure, we'll let you know. Um, you, Unless you've received an invitation or received an application for year two, year three grant, you won't um, have access to those actual applications, the paper application. You can download the paper applications on our website. So if you're going to start a grant, you're going to click on whichever grant you wish to start, and you're going to go ahead and click on it. And it's going to then take you to a page that looks something like this. This is our universal year one application. So our universal year one application has two tabs. These two tabs are going to let you allow you to start a single school's application or multiple schools application. This is really important. If you're applying for maybe two or three schools, it will make your life much easier to do this through the multiple school application. If you're doing the district grant, absolutely you're going to want to do the multiple application because what will happen is this will also fill in many of the answers um, from multiple schools rather than having to answer every school with the same, some of the same information over and over and over again. So this is where you get to choose if you're going to do a single school or a multiple school. From there, you're going to go ahead and enter your application. Um, you'll notice a grant is not submitted until you see this grant submitted and it's really big and green and, and exciting and you'll know it's done. You're going to want to save frequently. We'll go through some additional tips. But you'll notice also that there are tabs. There are going to be some tabs on this page. You're going to want to make sure you get through all the tabs, saving frequently. Um, and then once you hit submit, it will tell you if it's submitted successfully. If it hasn't, it'll tell you where the problems lie. There are questions that are required, and there are also questions um, that have limits. So it could be a character limit. It could be uh, a budget limit. You can't go over the budget amount for the grant. So you're going to want to make sure that you have them put in $5,000 because it's a $2,100 grant for the district grant or something along those lines. You will, can also view where you are. So for example, you might have um, schools that are submitted and then schools that are in progress. And as you can see here, these are from this past year, but you'll see the same thing with this year with those that are in progress and those that are submitted. So here you can see it's not quite done yet because there's still kind of opening here. So that those are in progress, and these are fully submitted because they're all in green. So you'll see that on your portal page as well. OK. So in the application process, we've spelled out some additional um, tips so that you can use this to help you. We have an FAQ that will help you um, that I will include in your follow-up materials. So know that um, you will not be left alone to try to figure it out and will help you as much as possible. But um, there are also steps that you can do to make sure that um, you're getting through this as easily as possible when you get into the portal. You're going to want to use a certain version of internet browsers. Explorer, for some reason, doesn't seem to work well. Uh, we find that most of our, our problems happen when someone's using Explorer. So use Chrome or Foxfire. Um, those internet browsers tend to be um, most compatible. And if you're not sure if you have the most up-to-date version, you can talk to your school's um, IT department and ask. Um, you know, really old versions might not work as well either. Save often. We know it's frustrating if you hit if you haven't saved 
and then all of a sudden you do something and nothing's there. We get it's really frustrating. And I apologize in advance, but that's why we want you to save often because um, if you for some reason save and nothing gets saved, if you've only answered a couple questions, then it's not so bad to go back and um, re-answer those. Um, usually it's related to um, not using an up-to-date version of your internet browser. So try to save as often as you can. You'll move through the application by clicking on tab. So every tab you answer the question, hit save, and then move on to the next tab. There are questions that require responses. So even if it doesn't apply to you and you think, oh, I don't need to answer it, answer it anyway. Um, because you'll be told to go back and complete a question on tab three or tab four, whatever tab is missing something, it'll guide you to go back if when you go to submit there's something incomplete. Um, if you're applying for multiple schools, notice this is in red, <laughs> um, and you're using the multiple school application to start, you want to wait to apply answers. There's a tab on the multiple school application that says apply answers. Wait till you're all done that first one before you apply your answers because then what will happen is once you've designated which schools are you're going to apply for that district grant, um, all of those answers will then get applied to all of those schools, making your life so much easier. Uh, this is a great feature. We're really excited about it, but you have control over when that, that apply answers happen. So we're going to say, even though it's on every page, wait till the end and right before you hit submit, apply your answers and then hit submit. These um, common answers will then be auto-filled into all the other applications that you plan to apply for. Um, the, you want to also then gather your school level data because individual school applications will still need to be completed. So if you're applying for 10 schools under the district grant, you're going to make sure you have your principal name and email. You're going to need your ADP for lunch and breakfast and create a budget for each school. Um, and that's if all schools are doing the same plan. If they're all doing something a little different, you might need to do um, individual applications. So here are some important deadlines. Um, today's March 1st. Happy March. Uh, we know it's a busy month, and, and April 1st is when our applications are due. We do not plan to extend our deadline, so we encourage you to get your applications in early and um, not wait till the last minute. We do know that sometimes there's overload issues on those last couple of days when everyone's trying to log in, and we really would hate for that to be a reason why um, your application can get in. So please do everything that you can to submit early as possible. We will uh, work to start reviewing them, and if there's um, guidance that we can give you to help, we'll be happy to help you do that. Um, our awarded schools will be noted by May 9th, and we'll be working with schools to get your terms and conditions or it's, it's another name for um, an agreement form completed. You'll be providing a five-person school health team um, contact information if you don't already have one. You'll be selecting five people to help serve to um, help implement the grant and then completing your school health index. Um, note that the school health index is a modified version of the CDC school health index. Um, and all schools that are funded by Action for Healthy Kids are to complete it. Um, if you have worked with the um, Alliance for a Healthier Generation in the past and have completed the School Health Index within the last six months with them, we will um, be working with them to help share data so you won't have to complete it again with us. So know if you've already completed it within the last six months, you won't have to do it again. But this. This really enables us to help provide you with some year-over-year -year data and um, really help to impact your overall school wellness and maybe not just in um, terms of school breakfast. Uh, so it really helps provide some valuable information for you. In September, we'll have a webinar for grant-funded schools. So we'll be able to talk about um, some upcoming events and things like that, some things that you're going to want to think about, help to provide some additional support and resources. Um, your first project report is due in December with a midterm report. 
Um, we will be doing a survey um, about your Every Kid Healthy Week event in, that's due in early April. And then end of May is our final project report. So those are some things that will be happening um, and some important deadlines. So when applying, um, you're going to have some important tips that you want to think about. You want to really be communicating um, at, with as much clarity as you can about your project. If you're going to be incorporating um, a grab-and-go and it's going to the classroom, tell us it's grab-and-go to the classroom. Um, if you're going to be incorpor incorporating a grab-and-go and you're producing a kiosk, tell us that. and Tell us as much information as you can. Um, and then, as I've noted before, you can be funded for both a universe or for a breakfast grant and a game on grant, but you can't be funded for two different breakfast grants. So, in terms of alternative breakfast models, um, there are some standard breakfast models that you might be choosing from, or maybe you're going to incorporate something different at your school. Um, what we're talking about is breakfast that's out of the cafeteria and ideally after the bell. And um, those we know are the, the models that have the highest participation rates. But depending upon your school, you might be incorporating something a little bit different. We have schools in warm climates that are doing breakfast at the curb or breakfast in the courtyard or um, you know, or some other type of breakfast. So you'll tell us a little bit about it. We have some drop downs or boxes that you can check. But if you're doing something different, tell us about it. Um, and if you're offering a free breakfast, whether it be a universal free or community eligibility, tell us that as well. So when thinking about, we have the um, application divided into different categories. And um, we also ask questions about the project. We ask we ask questions about evaluation. Um, evaluation can be really as simple as measuring ADP. ADP is average daily participation. If you're not the, in food service, you can get that number from your um, cafeteria manager, your food service director, from your district, whomever. But it's a number that they um, are collecting every month anyway. So it's really easy to capture that. Um, you might want to be um, thinking about you know, maybe some student surveys around taste testing or student surveys around, um, you know, where would they like to eat their breakfast or anything along those lines. So that could be your evaluation. We will ask for a budget. Your budget, um, as I mentioned, the portal will not accept anything over the amount. Um, you might be needing more money to get your um, program implemented. Just tell us where, that, where are you going to get that money from. It could be from your district. It could be through from another grant. You know, whatever the case may be, but you can't put that uh, too much. Oh, you can't put anything over the amount into your budget. Um, you want to be able to, you know, lift your equipment. You don't have to say you're purchasing 12. Um, insulated bags, you can just write insulated bags for the total cost. The, um, the budget will be broken down into two installments. You'll receive 65% at the start of the grant and 35% uh, at the midpoint of the grant. Um, you cannot include food. So don't say, you know, you're going to be purchasing additional fruit or vegetables. We can't um, pay for the food that would normally be reimbursed by the USDA. But you can do food for taste tests, and that would be maybe fall under different events. And unfortunately, we can um, use our food, or our funds, excuse me, to pay for staffing. So if you're going to have increased staffing needs, you're going to need to be pulling them from other areas of your budget um, and not from our grant funded budgets. Um, on the portal, on the budget page, you'll have different categories, equipment, incentives, um, meetings, events lots of different categories. If you're not using funds in those categories, just put an NA um, in that description because it will recognize that that, that field is empty. So um, it will require you to go back um, before you can submit. So go ahead and just put that in um, when you're submitting your portal. Oh my, we're running out of time. Um, I just want to quickly move through and uh, wrap this up. If you have questions that weren't answered, know that I will follow up with you afterwards. So don't um, panic too much that you're maybe a question didn't get answered live. Um, as I mentioned, it's going to be divided into two payments. Um, if you're um, 
if your award is um, for a year two and year three schools, you will not be receiving the um, additional promotional items, but the other year one schools will be receiving um, $100 less in actual funds and will receive $100 worth of promotional items. Um, and those were those banners that I showed and some of the physical activity and nutritional um, materials around Every Kid Healthy Week. So uh, that is clearly spelled out on the applications and um, just so that you're not surprised by why um, you might have received $4,900 instead of $5,000, or why you received $2,000 per school instead of $2,100. The total award is $5,000, is $2,100, but it includes, um, it's less the $100 um, for the promotional items that we send. We do provide additional technical assistance. We have webinars and newsletters um, that are focused on school breakfast. We have provide expert assistance in terms of national staff as well as state level um, folks who can help connect you with local resources for additional support. Um, we do provide additional resources and training for your grant team, volunteers to help um, ensure success, um, and also to help for that additional years of potential funding. Um, we will provide strategies and assistance with evaluation, as well as communication, um, how to you know, get out press releases and other information. And those that are receiving the district breakfast grants receive the site visit, as well as uh, convening of the funded um, districts to um, uh, foster peer learning and best practices. All right, so if we have a, just a couple of minutes, Jill, are there any um, key themes that we can answer real quickly, or otherwise we, I might have to be following up with folks? Um, can you please go over the free and reduced guidelines, and if there's any wiggle room in terms of where the cutoff points are to be eligible? Sure. Um, there, well, there's always wiggle room, I guess, and that's the that's the struggle that we have when we put guidelines. Um, in terms of the district grant, we, we say 50%, but we do know that um, that's an average, and so that you might have some higher schools um, that are in your application and some lower schools. We tend not to want to go much too low um, beyond that 50% mark because we know that those schools may have struggle to um, receive impacts that we need to, because we owe our funders certain impacts. Um, so for example, if you have a school that's 48, 46%, and then you have schools that are 70%, they can all be included in that district grant. In terms of the universal, or let me go back before we go past the district grant. For a district grant, if you have a smaller or lower level free and reduced, and it might be 32%, I would not include them in your application. Um, it, it's going to be a struggle um, to reach a 35% increase. Um, so I would say you know you want to really be thinking about that as well. Um, in terms of the universal breakfast grant, it's really about your break-even point. So if your break-even point, um, meaning that you're going to be sustainable, successful, not losing money, um, if your break-even point, the cost of your meals, your cost of your labor is lower than 60%, then you should apply. If your cost, if your break-even point is going to be um, higher, do you really want you know, to apply for a school that's lower? I mean, will that be setting your school up for losses? We don't want to set your school up for losses. We want you to apply for three years in a row with our grants because you're successful and you're receiving multiple years of funding. So that, that's really kind of on, you know, a decision that kind of has to be made by you as to what is um, a break-even point. And if you're not sure how to calculate that, we'll send um, materials out that will help you and some links that will help you determine, you know, where that is because you have to enter in your cost of labor as well as your expenses related to the food that you're using to help determine your um, 
how many students you, you need to be feeding on a daily basis. And we're, all, we're talking about um, feeding kids, and that's really the key there. And in terms of game on, there is no eligibility requirement. However, um, priority is being given to those students or those schools that have um, a free and reduced of 50% or greater. Um, but that should not mean that you do not apply if you're less than that, if you're interested in the Game On grants. I will take one more question, Jill. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think in terms of the grants and things like that. Lots of questions about district-wide. Do they all need to do the same alternative breakfast program in every school district-wide? No. No, good question. Um, it, in terms of the multiple school applications, if they're all doing the same program, um, then you should do the multiple school application and it'll auto-fill all your projects in, but you can fill in certain pieces of the application and then individual schools can have changes in different programs um, depending. Or maybe you're going to do all of your um, elementary schools are breakfast in the classroom, and maybe your high schools are doing grab and go. So you might do two different applications and um, sit down and do them s separately. Um, so they do not have to do the same program. It really is thinking about your schools and your schools' needs and what um, works best for your schools. Okay, so we're going to wrap up. As I mentioned, you have um, a state contact who is a state coordinator in most of the states. We know not every state has a state coordinator. If you don't have one, um, you can contact School Grants at Action for Healthy Kids. Uh, this is manned on a daily basis, and questions will be answered that way as well. I will be following up, and I will also provide um, your state coordinator um, contact information if you're in a state that has a funded state coordinator. Um, and then any other questions, I will be able to answer that um, if Jill was not able to answer your questions during the webinar. Um, we hope you'll apply. We hope these are exciting um, opportunities for you. We know that um, additional funding really helps to make um, these things possible, and we'll do everything in our power to make this a, su a successful process for you to get you funded, because that is our goal, and then help you to be successful in feeding more kids. Uh, thank you for attending today. These are all pictures of kids that um, have been in part of our grants over the years, and you know, we're excited to have this opportunity to share our grants with you and hopefully have you um, apply and be part of our school network um, and part of our Action for Healthy Kids network going forward. Um, if you haven't registered for the um, Game On webinar, I encourage you to, and you're interested in that, I encourage you to go to our grants page and um, and click on and register for the Game On webinar, too. Look for the follow-up material in the next two days, and um, we look forward to working with you soon. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care.